Hey everybody, welcome back to Urology 101. I'm James Farrell, you found my video blog on common topics in urology. Now if you're watching this on YouTube, all the videos are there. They're also on my website, as is some other information, so please check that out. Urology101.com, the first part of that spelled Y-O-U-R. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, same handle, Urology101. I'm just spending less time there right now, my efforts are elsewhere. Now, it's been a little while, so thanks so much for keeping up with me and tuning in. And I hope you like where we're going with this. I want to start talking about cancer. I want to get into a series of a couple different conversations, ultimately get to prostate cancer, but I'd like to set a framework and give some generalities. So cancer is a truly complex disease process, and unfortunately something that has probably affected almost every family in this country. Now, although it is complex, and everybody's cancer is unique, there are some generalities, and I would like to hit some of those generalities today. I'd also like to try and, and provide a goal of saying, well, I, I want people to try and feel as though they can be conversational with their doctors and with their family members alike in this conversation. So let's start off with something, what is cancer? Cancer is disorganized and unregulated cell growth that does not respect boundaries. An analogy here with, uh, an analogy I tend to use is um, somebody's yard and weeds. So think of a yard that has nice green grass, completely full, lush, and maybe a bunch of dandelion seeds blow in the wind and spread across it. And maybe none of those seeds can get down into the yard because the grass is really thick and there just aren't nutrients for those seeds to grow. It has a really good defense against, that, against those dandelion seeds. But say at another time, Maybe the yard has a couple openings and the dandelion seeds hit the soil and they end up growing a little bit. And somebody who lives there sees those dandelions and they either shoot them with weed killer or pick them up from the roots or do something else and then get rid of them. And then they're gone. And maybe they come back a few years later or maybe they're gone forever. Or maybe they try to get rid of some of those dandelions, but those dandelions that grew, well, they have seeds too, and they spread a little bit more. And then we all have probably seen that yard that is just full of dandelions, and it's hard to see the grass. And, and each one of those processes can, can describe a part of cancer that people have been through. And so it's a helpful analogy. When we talk about cancer, we have to hit a couple terms too. So there are words like metastasis, malignant, benign, the word neoplasia, tumor. You may have heard these. You may have been unlucky enough for somebody to say that you have a malignant neoplasia. And for you to look at the person and say, I have no idea what that means. And you would be fair to feel like they were speaking to you in Latin because they probably, they almost were. So neoplasia in Latin means new growth. And malignant is a word that we use for cancer. Now that is opposite from the word benign. So there can be benign neoplasias. And benign tends to be a phrase that we use for growth that is maybe disorganized, but it just sort of stays in, in, the, in the organ where it started. It doesn't care to look like it wants to move anywhere. It might push in the organ a little bit. It can cause some problems, but it doesn't want to leave the organ. And a really typical one here that most people know is a fibroid uterus. So fibroids in a uterus, they're actually called leiomyomas, and they are benign tumors. They're not cancer. They don't want to leave, but they do cause some problems. Now, a helpful way to think about benign and malignant is to think about some time when you may have been at a restaurant with friends, because we've all been standing in a group at a bar or restaurant and talking, and then all of a sudden somebody is walking by you, or maybe they're at the bar trying to get a drink, and you just feel them sort of like leaning on you, or maybe they get their elbow into you, or they're just kind of like, they're just kind of annoying you, their hips on you, or something's bothersome, but that's as far as it goes, right? That's the extent that it's bothersome. That's a little different from you being in a bar with friends and somebody goes up to order a drink, some belligerent guy, he's drunk, and he grabs his drink, he walks through your group, interrupts the thing, knocks a couple of your drinks over, maybe knocks somebody else over, walks over to another table, throws that over, the security guards have to come by, they drag him out. That guy's malignant. That's really what malignancy is. It is something that spreads and doesn't respect boundaries. Now, when cancers spread, outside of the organ where they started. We call that metastasis. Now, sometimes, sometimes metastasis means just to the lymph nodes. Sometimes metastasis means to very distant um, organs, and, and we can get into that a little later. When we start talking about cancer and we've diagnosed it, the first thing we need to do is what's called staging. Staging is a concept of understanding 
where the cancer is. Is it just in the organ, meaning organ confined? Or has it left that organ and gone elsewhere? Now the way we stage things is with a combination of blood tests and x-ray studies like CTs, MRIs, sometimes something called nuclear medicine tests. And again, the point for staging is to be able to say, well, here are a group of people who are at the same spot, and we've done research on them, and we know that these types of treatments work best. So by staging people, we can help identify what therapies may work best at that current spot. Now, staging tends to be between stage one and stage four, with stage one being the lowest stage, which is almost always organ-confined cancer, meaning that the cancer is still inside the organ where it started. And stage four cancer is that it has spread distantly or it has metastasized to other organs. Now, cancers can leave their organ of origin by a variety of ways, and it depends on the cancer. Some go by lymph nodes, some go by bone, some go by blood. Now, staging is entirely different from something called risk categories. And you may hear that too, and it's pretty easy to think if somebody says that there's a high risk cancer, that that means high stage, but it doesn't. When we talk about risk, we also are talking about aggressiveness. So risk categories and aggressiveness are synonyms. And they have to do with how the cells of the original cancer look. So if we say something is either low, moderate, or high risk, what we mean by that is we're, we're giving a description to the original cancer. And when we say something is aggressive, we're usually saying that the initial cancer inside the organ looks aggressive, not that it's spread far. That goes back to staging. So recognize that there's a difference there, and risk categories make a big difference sometimes in how people are treated as well. Now, how do cancers actually do some of their damage? So the main way it happens is that, that those cells divide as much as they want. For whatever reason, they've been able to go around the normal mechanism of how often cells divide and divide as rapidly as they feel like it, and they often divide rapidly, much more rapidly than, than the organ usually does. And by doing so, they chew up a lot of the nutrients that that organ usually uses. And because they divide, they get bigger, and so they get in the way of the normal architecture or framework of that organ. And if they leave that organ, they go somewhere else, they do that same problem elsewhere. So the reason that cancer becomes a problem is because it takes up the nutrients that, are, that the body usually needs for the normal processes to keep a normal healthy body and just purely by getting into other organs it just gets in the way it gums up the works it's uh, a branch in a spoke in a in a bike you know it just doesn't allow the tires to turn correctly it doesn't allow the gears to work and eventually things just kind of break down and the nutrients aren't there to help the body recover from things like infections so that's that's really how cancer does its damage over time when we talk about treatment there are some general categories, right? I, I can't get into all treatments. I do want to get a separate video on preventive therapies and some on a little bit on genetics, uh, and then get into some specific stuff in cancers and urology that I treat. But in terms of general treatments, there are a handful of things we can do. One is we can watch it. Not all cancers need treatment. That's right. Not all cancers need treatment. There are low risk cancers that don't sometimes. Prostate cancer is a great example. Plenty of low-risk prostate cancer doesn't need treatment. A lot of times we need to watch it. That's called active surveillance. And some other cancers, thyroid has some cancers that don't need treatment. But there are some groups that we just need to pay attention to. So that's an option. Sometimes surgery is an option for cancers, and sometimes it's not. That's usually cutting it out. Sometimes something called chemotherapy is an option. Chemotherapy is about using medicines, whether they be medicines people swallow or ones that go into an IV, that are designed at, at killing rapidly dividing cells, because again, cancer cells are rapidly dividing. And, and there are a variety of mechanisms that live in the world of chemotherapy. And, and it's true people could say that some of those medicines are poison, uh, and in some ways they really are and feel that way. But they're trying to poison or stop the cells that divide most rapidly. And sometimes that's where people get the hair loss, that's where people get the nausea and the vomiting, because we also have cells in our bodies that divide rapidly on purpose. And so that can injure that process for those cells sometimes too. And as we get more specific with chemotherapy, some of those side effects become dampened down, which is obviously what we're looking for.
Now, uh, sort of an arm of chemotherapy uh, that most people would consider would be something called immunotherapy. In, in reality, it's very different, but um, immunotherapy is still going to be medications, whether IV or by mouth, that are designed at going specifically after cancer cells. Now, immunotherapy is something that's been used in cancer for decades, but certainly has gotten a lot more press over the last 10 years as immunologists who often lead medicine with vaccines in a variety of ways have been able to work with cancer biologists and oncologists to really understand how to harness this against certain uh, certain cancers and it's such an exciting great development for people so if you ever hear something called the, the pdl1 inhibitors that's really what people are talking about so other than chemotherapy uh, we can talk about radiotherapy that's where we shoot x-rays and certain types of energy at cancers to sort of what's called zap them. I mean, that's, that's obviously not a, a medical term, but in general, that's what we're doing. We're beaming x-rays at, at cells that divide rapidly, and that bothers the DNA of those cells so that they don't work correctly. And that ends up being an option sometimes as well. And then um, other options are more focal options. I would group those into what are called ablative therapies. So if you've heard of cryotherapy or radiofrequency ablation, um, or there's some vascular uh, therapies, there's some phototherapy that might be coming out in the near future, and there's some laser-derived therapies that can be helpful for treating focal cancers as well. Um, I think that's kind of a broad definition of some of the treatment options. Uh, we use them in different places. It's just hard to cover specifics in this one. But I do really thank you for your attention. It's great to see you guys again. Uh, hopefully I can get back to some regularity. Life's been a little busy. I hope you're all doing well. Send me your questions and your thoughts. My best to you all. Take care.